At the time, I thought I was living the life I wanted to. I made a million dollars before I was 22, 23 years old. Crazy. I thought what I was doing was right. It, it wasn't. There are many drivers that could fit the category of most aggressive driver in NASCAR. When a fan looks at today's drivers, they tend to point to drivers such as Ross Chastain and Ty Gibbs. If people wanted to look at all of NASCAR history, many would say legends like Dale Earnhardt, Cal Yarbrough, or Curtis Turner. I already talked about the most chaotic driver to reach the NASCAR series in a video I made last year. Robbie Gordon had his ups and downs, but at the very least, he had his chance in the spotlight and raced against the best. The same could not be said for this driver, as his career in NASCAR was over in just a span of four years. His talent was unmatched, but unfortunately, his behavior couldn't be kept in check. The driver we will be talking about today is Shane Mill, one of the biggest what-ifs in NASCAR. On May 15, 1980, in Pleasant Garden, North Carolina, Lisa and Steve Mill would bring their oldest son into the world and name him Shane Mill. If the name Steve Mill sounds familiar, that is because of his talent up on the pit box as a crew chief. Steve would be the crew chief for Mark Martin's team between 1992 through 1996, as well as a part-time crew chief for Dale Earnhardt Incorporated in the early 2000s. While Shane was growing up, it came to no one's surprise that he was interested in the sport of racing. But unlike his dad, he was more interested in being behind the wheel. At a young age, many saw him as super competitive, as well as sometimes chaotic. Many believed that he suffered from ADHD, but it turned out it would be bipolar disorder. Unfortunately, Shane and his family would not know this until much later into adulthood. Regardless of his erratic behavior, he wanted to be a race car driver and started making that into a reality at a young age. At the age of 12, Shane Mill was competing in the go-kart scene, collecting more than 150 victories in just three years. At 18, Shane moved up into the late model series grabbing the attention of many people due to his natural talent behind the wheel, earning him a spot to compete in the NASCAR's Good Eats Dash Series, a NASCAR sanctioned event that ran V6 motors and mostly at short tracks. Shane was able to earn the Rookie of the Year honor, as well as collect two victories and finish fifth in the point standings. This impressive performance would catch the attention of Innovative Motorsports, which led to their decision to field the young prodigy in a second car for their Xfinity Series team. This meant that Shane was able to go from the late model racing scene to NASCAR's second biggest division in less than four years. It wouldn't take long for the general public to know who Shane Mill was in NASCAR. On the inside of row seven in his very first NASCAR Busch Series start, Shane Mill. In 2002, Mill would start the season on a high note. His debut in the x series would start with a top five finish, as well as sponsorship expansions that allowed the 47 car to run full time. With such early good news in his rookie season, many felt like this would be a stellar season for the young prospect. But things didn't go quite that way, as many soon realized that the driver may have had an issue that stemmed from a young age. Throughout the season, Shane Mill would have multiple run-ins with his fellow competitors in the Xfinity series. It seemed like it didn't matter if he was in the battle for first place or seventh place. If there was a driver in his way, Mill would do everything he could to get past them. A strong mentality to have in the sport, but one that would lead to many rivalries for Mill. His most documented rivalry would be fellow Rookie of the Year contender and future Coca-Cola 600 winner, Casey Mears. Throughout the 2002 season, the two would collide on the racetrack multiple times. Many hoped that his temperament would get better entering the 2003 season, as he would be the primary driver for Innovative Motorsports. But instead, Mill would make things worse by getting into an old teammate in the middle of the Rockingham race. The incident was pretty egregious and one that upset both Mike Wallace as well as Daryl Waltrip, who was commentating on the race. Wallace would voice his displeasure with Shane Mill, but it appeared that Shane didn't want anything to do with the upset driver. 
It would later be confirmed by Mill himself that the reason why he didn't want to make the situation any worse than it already was because of a dark secret that he was keeping from everyone in the NASCAR garage. On top of Shane Mills' unnecessary aggressive driving style, the young driver was struggling with an addiction that started at the young age of 12. Shane was a regular user of marijuana, a drug that was illegal in the early 2000s and one that impairs a person's reaction time behind the wheel, a combination that would be highly dangerous for someone behind a 3-ton stock car. Shane knew that being caught with this in his system would be detrimental towards his advancement into NASCAR's highest division and did his best to hide it from the world. Unfortunately for him, it would be a Richmond race that would expose the driver that something was not right. Throughout the race, Shane Mill was making erratic moves that many professional drivers knew were not intelligent decisions. The worst being near the end of the race where Mill would make a dive bomb move that would take out Jason Keller in turn 3. Things would only get worse after an altercation post race. It was a crazy and dumb move for sure and one that made NASCAR drug test a North Carolina native due to reasonable suspicion mean that Shane Mills' drug use was about to be exposed. In September of 2003, NASCAR reported that driver Shane Mill would be suspended from the Xfinity series for failing the drug test policy for the use of marijuana. A shocking news story as a NASCAR driver failing a wellness policy was almost taboo in the sport. Mill would miss the rest of the 2003 season, ending ties with Innovative Motorsports, a huge blow to the rising star as he was set to drive the 91 car for Everham Motorsports. Shane Mill was forced to go towards the Road to Recovery program if he was ever to race in NASCAR again. Unfortunately for Mill, he was not going to be able to return back to the x Fandy series right away as his drug use was well recognized in the sport. However, there was one team that was willing to give him a second chance down in the truck series, and that was Billy Below Motorsports. The team was no stranger to the truck series as they have been around since 1996. If this team sounds familiar, it could be mostly due to the fact that this team was involved in one of the scariest accidents in truck series history. The team was not a championship caliber team, but had the capability to score a victory. Shane understood that it would be extremely difficult to get back to the same level that he once was, but if there was ever anyone up to the task, it was Mill. Got him a little bit loose, bumped him, and here he goes. Coming at him, turn number four, Shane Mill will win the Las Vegas 350. After one year of failing the drug test that ended his 2003 season, Shane Mill would be able to score one victory in the truck series, sign on to race with Braun Racing in the Xfinity series in 2005, and even ran a few races in the NASCAR Cup series for Bill Davis Racing. To say he picked up right where he left off would be an understatement, as many believe he would be racing in the Cup series full time in the coming years. There was never a doubt in all that new Shane Mill that his talent in racing was still there, it was whether or not his downfalls had remained with him in his second chance in the sport. Throughout the 2004 and 2005 season, Shane might have improved his consistency, but his super aggressive nature was still there. In the Sharpie 250 in 2005, Shane Mill was doing everything he could to move up the field at the end of the race. His aggressive driving style was pushed to its limits that weekend as he was continuously bumping competitors out of the way in order to advance his position. A move that was common at Bristol Motor Speedway, but not used on every single lap like Shane was doing. With just two laps to go, Shane Mill had the 1999 Cup Series champion of Dale Jarrett in front of him in the 12th position. Although it was a position nonetheless, it definitely wasn't one that was worth making enemies over. But in Shane Mill's eyes, it was one that he absolutely needed. A shot up the hill by Carl Edwards. Well, and Dale, Jared, Shane Mill get together on the front stretch. Caution oh, is out. Clear. Caution's out. And oh. with three laps to go, that will be the race. The heat cycles on them. Now Dale Jarrett did not climb in the ambulance. He has not walked to the care center. He is walking up track. Guys, I don't know about you, but he's got that look like he may have something he wants to say to somebody. This young man that that was unnecessary. Dale just waved off the NASCAR official, said, I'll be with you in just a minute.
frustrated and you tried to tell Shane Mio what you thought. Well, we were already three wide. I mean, we had a slow car up high. John Wood had got loose there and I got under him. Where do you think he's going? We're on a half mile racetrack. He's got to use his head. Shane Mayo would be fined and penalized for this incident due to it being on live TV, making himself public enemy number one in most people's eyes. Most young drivers tend to show respect on the racetrack, especially to those who have major success in racing, but Shane never really cared who was in front of him. It didn't matter if it was a fellow rookie, a past teammate, or even a past champion. Shane Mill only focused on getting the best finishing position he could earn, which made everyone realize that his aggressive driving nature was never going to change. Which begged the question, if it seemed like nothing had changed with the North Carolina native after his second chance, did that mean he was falling into his same bad habits? That couldn't be it, right? Shane Meal obviously spurring this conversation in the Bush Series. Second problem in that area. So, Jeff, for you, quick one. Will Shane Meal race again? That's entirely up to him. He has this opportunity right now. NASCAR will work with him to get him the necessary treatment to be able to do that. But it's going to be his choice whether or not he's willing to go through it one more time and get himself cleaned up so right. he can come back. After what felt like deja vu for the past Truck Series winner, Shane Mill failed another substance test after driving erratically in a qualifying session at Dover. This time, he tested positive for two illegal drugs, marijuana and cocaine, proving to officials that things did not get better for Shane on his drug use, but rather, it was getting worse. He would be suspended indefinitely by NASCAR and would only be allowed in NASCAR again if he submitted to frequent drug testing before reinstatement. Sadly, he would eventually fail that one as well and would be given the harshest penalty a driver could receive, ban from the sport for life. That was it. Shane's final chance in running a NASCAR was over. A driver with so much talent unfortunately claimed due to an addiction that he suffered throughout his life. It turned out that Shane Mill had been smoking marijuana as early as 12 years old, as well as using cocaine around 100 times in his life. This would lead to him eventually going into rehab and exploring different racing ventures as his stock car career was over. Four years after his lifetime ban, he decided that he would focus on racing an IndyCar, which made him focus on running in the dirt scene. The success he had on the dirt was unbelievable. In a span of 18 months, Mill was able to win in the USAC Sprint Car Division, the USAC Midget Series, and even the Silver Crown Series. He was also able to win the Hoosier 100, as well as becoming the first ever driver to win the USAC Triple Crown in the same season. His success was not going unnoticed either, as Shane Mill would receive an offer to race in the Firestone Indy Light Series. It was only going to be a matter of time before fans would see him again race in a premier racing series. On October 9, 2010, during a qualifying session at a USAC Silver Crown race, Mill would crash going into turns 3 and 4. The impact was so powerful that it damaged the roll bar, leaving the driver exposed to take impact from the outside retaining wall. The impact went down his neck and caused his back to basically shatter. Miraculously, he survived the impact, but he was far from okay. Mill would suffer severe head back and neck injuries, which forced doctors at Methodist Hospital to put Mill in a medically induced coma to minimize brain swelling. Doctors figured that he would never be able to breathe on his own again, nor use his arms and legs as they were about to install 18 inch rods into his back and a fake vertebrae in his neck. The news was devastating to the Mills family as they never believed that something like this would happen. Shane was about to go through some of the most serious surgeries that a person could have in a matter of days. But if anyone was going to be able to make it through something that extreme, it would be Shane Mill. The surgeries would be successful, but not without near falls, as Shane would flatline four different times during his time at the hospital. After five weeks in the hospital, Shane would be able to leave and start the long process of physical therapy. 
Although to this day, he still requires his wheelchair for mobility, Shane was able to surpass doctors' expectations on what he could and couldn't do. Even with the rods in his back and doctors doubt that he would ever be able to breathe on his own again, Shane has been able to gain back limited movements with his limbs and has no problem breathing on his own. His racing career up to that point, however, was over. And sadly, the driver would never be able to reach his dream of becoming an open wheel driver in the IndyCar series. Shane Mills' racing career may have ended that fateful day in Indiana, but his love and passion for motorsports still continues on as he is still heavily involved in dirt racing. Shane has taken the role of becoming an owner in the USAC Midget Division. He has been able to score a couple victories as an owner, as well as enter a vehicle into the iconic Chili Bowl race. He also remains active on social media, as well as posts videos of himself talking about important events in his life. They are still up to this day and I highly suggest watching a couple of his videos on his channel. The story of Shane Mill is definitely a fascinating one. It showed a driver who was handed everything due to his talent, ruined by addiction and selfishness, only to be given back in a different pathway and then altogether under tragic circumstances be taken away. As far as where he would fit in our alignment chart, there is no doubt in my mind that he belongs in Chaotic Impure. Although he has changed a new leaf ever since he checked into rehab in 2007, it still doesn't change how he used to drive in his time in NASCAR. There was hardly anyone as aggressive and wild out on the racetrack like Shane Mill. It did not matter whether he was around rookies or legends, running for first or 21st, or it was lap two or even 492, he was going to race the same way no matter what. Many people believe that he threw everything away due to his actions, and that I can agree with to a certain extent. But in my eyes, he represented a lifestyle perfectly. What would someone be like if they had all the talent in the world and decided to live selfishly and chaotically throughout most of their life? Well, we don't have to ask that question. We just have to look at the story of Shane Mill.